Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Azrin the Language Nerd here. I'm the owner of the Calgary Language Nerds, and welcome to today's Behind the Scenes update. If you are new to these Behind the Scenes updates and you don't know what they're about, I will take a minute or two and I will take a minute or two and tell you a little bit about them right now. If you have already watched or listened to, if you're on the podcast, watched or listened to the very first Behind the Scenes update and you know what this is about, feel free to fast forward about a minute and a half, and that's when this episode is going to start properly. So these behind the scenes updates, it's something that I started to create a build up to a new show that I, a new video show, I guess, and podcast, of course, which I'm calling the best way to learn a language. There are many ways to learn a language. There's no doubt about that. However, different strategies and different methods work for different people. In other words, what works for me may not work for you. And therefore, what I wanted to do is create a video series on YouTube as well as a podcast where I explain different methods and different strategies that people can use to learn another language. That way, you can watch these videos, you can follow some of the step-by-step -step instructions that I provide, and of course, listen to the podcast if that's how you choose to consume this. You can watch slash listen to those episodes and you can pick a methodology that works best for you. So I'm trying to consolidate a lot of different methods and strategies all in one place. So you can go to one place, watch slash listen to a whole bunch of content to go, okay, this is one method. Azrin says this is another method. Here's another method. And maybe there's 10 different methods that I outline and you can find one that you can find one that appeals to you. And so these behind the scenes update, these behind the scenes updates, what they are is it's a chance for me to share some of the behind the scenes as I as I prepare these videos and podcasts where I, I break down a specific methodology and I can sort of give you an inside look as to what I'm working on. So right now, I'll throw this on the screen if you're on if you're on YouTube, on the podcast, you won't be able to see it, but I'll describe it. Um I want to share what I'm considering selecting for the very first um, very first episode of the best way to learn a language. And the methodology, or rather the strategy, that I want to outline in the very first episode, I think, is going to be private lessons. Taking private lessons. By the way, I am open to other suggestions. If you have another type of methodology that you'd like to see me talk about, for example, then by all means, let me know in the comments, send me a message on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, whatever platform you want. I'm open to suggestions because I do want to make, mul I do want to make quite a few different episodes um, elaborating on a variety of different language learning methods. Does that make sense? So feel free to reach out. My username on every social media platform is the same. It is at polyglot Azrin, that is spelled P-O-L-Y, G L O T A Z or Z, depending on your country, R E N. And so right now I'm going to stick with private lessons for the most part. That's the presentation that I'm that I'm working on. And I've selected private lessons because, first of all, I have taken a lot of private lessons, and I continue to take I continue to take a lot of private lessons when learning uh, when learning languages. So I have a lot of personal experience with private lessons. I also have a lot of professional experience with private lessons, seeing as my business, the Calgary Language Nerds, the primary service that we offer, my team and I, is private lessons or very small group lessons. Let's call them semi-private lessons with two or maybe three people in the group. That's the bulk of what we do. So I have a lot of experience from the teacher side of things, the tutoring side of things, the professional side of things with private lessons as well. So I thought to myself, well, maybe that's a great place to start because it's something I have a lot of experience with. Now, a language, a piece of language learning advice I'd like to give you, um, I don't have it. I'm looking at, for the podcast people, I'm looking at my presentation right now, which is nowhere near even done. I can't remember if I made a slide on it yet. No, I didn't. I can't show it to you. That's okay. Um, a language learning piece of advice that I would like to share with you today that I think can be beneficial for people watching slash listening here has to do with what I call a language learning engine. So what's a language learning engine? It's not a groundbreaking theory, by the way. It's common sense. 
but it's important. It's common sense, but very important. And the language learning engine is something I was thinking about yesterday, which essentially is the following. When learning a language, you are going to use a lot of different strategies and methods. It's rare to find someone who only uses one strategy or only uses one method. Usually people have a couple of different strategies, a couple of different resources that they use. However, I believe that the vast majority of you are going to need some kind of engine, a primary resource or a primary method that drives the bulk of your progress. So, for example, let's say if we go back to private lessons, maybe private lessons would be your engine, perhaps. Perhaps that's your engine. The primary thing that you do that drives your progress is taking private lessons. And of course, you have other strategies you might be using too, but again, the primary engine that drives your progress is perhaps private lessons. I'll give you a little story from my personal life here. One of the primary engines for me is intensive, intensive, uh, let's call it intensive learning. I was going to say intensive lessons, but it's not quite intensive lessons. It's more intensive learning. Over my life, I have taken roughly, I want to say 10 different trips to countries where I was learning the language of that country. I've been to Peru uh, twice, so there's two trips there. I've been to France, I want to say one, two, basically I spent six, roughly six months in France. So there's a couple trips there at least, there's at least two trips in there, probably more than that actually. I did a trip to mainland China, to Beijing specifically. In fact, I did two trips there. I've done a lot. I've done a lot of these trips where I travel somewhere um, for an intensive, immersive experience, and I use that as an engine for my learning. Now, it's not the only engine. Maybe I've got a multi-card vehicle or something, or a multi-car, a multi-engine vehicle, something like that. But boy, is that one big driver for me. Because I will take, for example, one month out of the year or two months out of the year, and all I do for that one month or two months, all I really do is focus on learning my target language. So I'll take a whole bunch of lessons, I'll try to make friends who speak the language, I'll do language exchanges, I do listening practice, I do a whole bunch of things. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, sometimes I don't even travel abroad to do these kinds of immersive, intensive experiences. I've sometimes done it locally too. I remember it would have been about four years ago, maybe three years ago, something like four years ago, I want to say. I did a three-week intensive at home without even leaving my own city for Mandarin. So that's one engine for me that helps drive a lot of my progress. And without that engine, my I find that I struggle. That's something that for me is very, very important. So everyone, if you're going to take something away from this particular video slash podcast, I believe that everyone very likely needs an engine, maybe even a couple of different engines. Perhaps, here's the best way to put it actually, you might have multiple engines, but you probably only have one engine that you're using at a time. That's the way to view it. I have multiple engines that I use. Sometimes it's university classes. I like university classes for languages. Um, sometimes it's, it's intensive studies where I travel abroad. But I typically have one major engine that I'm using at a time. And I might cycle through different engines and use different engines, but typically there's one primary engine that is driving the bulk of my progress that's supported by a lot of side strategies, a lot of other strategies that are also happening, but again, they're on the side. Uh, another analogy you could use is uh, the analogy of a meal. You have your main course, maybe it's a steak or whatever you like to eat for your main course. I'm vegetarian, I don't eat steak, but let's just use steak for the example. <laughs> okay, so you have our steak, that's your main course, but you still have broccoli and maybe you have mashed potatoes, you have, you have some dessert, you have an appetizer, you have other things that surround the steak that you eat alongside the steak as well. And, but the steak is the main course. So that's the behind the scenes update today. I'll come back in the next couple of days or so with, uh, with more. Um, I got to build out this presentation and 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 um, really break break this down. Like, 
Like, who should take private lessons? Who's the ideal tutor for you? What should you do with the private tutor? Where can you find a tutor? How much does it cost? How often should you take lessons? And I want to break this down into far more detail. So that's my next, uh, my next step as of right now. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever it is for you. And I will see you soon. Bye for now.